Molar mass is a quantity that students need to be able to calculate directly from the formula or from the nomenclature, or the name that is written in the problem. So the problem we have in front of us is that we're to calculate the molar mass for calcium nitrate. In order to do this, we first must find out the formula, and then after we know the formula, we must calculate the molar mass. So let's begin by asking a couple of questions in order to build the formula. The first question we ask is, calcium belongs in which group? Now, a lot of students have memorized the alkali metals and the alkaline earth and the halogens and the noble gases. Therefore, they know the answer to this question right away. Some students, though, they may need to rely on the periodic table. So let's look at the periodic table and we can see calcium sits in the alkaline earth, or it sits in the second group. Because it sits in the second group, that tells us right away that calcium ion, as the cation, is going to become a Ca2+. In other words, two electrons are going to be lost, and the reason we know two electrons are going to be lost is because calcium sits in the second group. So that's the common ion of calcium. Next, we look at nitrate. Nitrate is a polyatomic. This is a polyatomic that you should have memorized. And if you memorized it, you know right away that it is NO3 with a negative charge. Now that we know the cation and the anion, we need to put them together correctly so that the formula shows a net charge of zero. Now the fastest way to do this is to write down our cation, write down our anion, and then we crisscross the superscript to become the subscript of the opposite ion. What I mean by this is this 2 plus, that 2 goes down here to become the subscript. So our formula ends up being Ca, and then in parentheses we put the polyatomic, the nitrate, and then we have a subscript of two. This means that we have two of the nitrates. Now that we have our formula for calcium nitrate, we can quickly calculate the molar mass by completing this chart. Now, not all teachers show students to use a chart like this, but if you find yourself getting lost in the masses and everything, this chart helps you make sure you don't miss anything. So let's just quickly fill this chart out the number of elements we have. For instance, in this calcium nitrate, we have calcium, we have nitrogen, and we have oxygen. Now we look at this and we see that we have one calcium. Now, a lot of students want to put two, or they want to put zero. The reason it's one is there's an implied one sitting just to the right of the calcium. It sits right here. Right? It's not this subscript of 2. That's a 2 of the nitrate. Okay, next, we have two nitrogens. So we distribute the subscript of the nitrate so we know how many nitrogens we have. Next, we know we have six oxygens. Our next step does require us to use the periodic table. I don't know very many people who are going to sit as high school students and memorize the masses of all these elements. So we look at calcium, and we can see right away from the periodic table that calcium has 40 grams per mole. So we go back to our table and we fill this in of 40. Next, we look up nitrogen, and nitrogen is going to have 14 grams per mole. And then next we look up oxygen. And oxygen, a lot of students do memorize oxygen because it's in so many problems. And we see right away that oxygen is 16. Now we do our math. We don't need a calculator. We can immediately go 40 times 1 is 40. We can then go 2 times 14 is 28. And then we can go 6 times 16 is 96. We want to line these up so that we can add these up very quickly. We see that we have 164 grams per mole. 
Now, some students are just shown to add these up without building this table, and if you prefer that method, that's fine. You would just simply say to yourself, okay, for calcium, I have one calcium, and I'm going to multiply that by 40. I'm then going to add the fact that I have two nitrogens, and each one weighs 14, and I have six oxygens, and I multiply that by 16, and that gives us our number. So, now I've shown you two different ways to calculate molar mass. I hope this helps. Good luck.